Hey guys, welcome to chapter one, section four. Uh, this section is going to be all on Git, which is a it's a type of version control system, uh, as well as Heroku, which is a service uh, where we can have our app hosted and we can deploy our app through them using Git commands. So it's going to be this section is going to be on that, and then we're going to have a a um, uh, programming section, not a programming section, but I'm going to show you how to actually deploy the app using Heroku. So if you don't know what Git is, um, that's fine. We're just going to, we're going to learn the basics here. We're going to learn enough to be able to use it. Um, and what it is, it's just an open source version control system. It was created by Linus Torvalds, who was the creator of Linux. Um, and it's used for all kinds of web applications. It was initially created for Ruby on Rails, but now you can use it, it supports um, Java and PHP and a, and a bunch of other languages and frameworks. And what Git is, was created for is to track apps, it's to track your files um, and any changes you make in your files from within the app and it's different from um, a standard version control system because for one it's it's local every all the changes you make are locally on your computer um, and then after you finish making your changes you just push it to the server uh, as opposed to a, a standard VCS it's just you have your your files on your computer and then the remote files and that's it there's no middleman there's nothing else if that if you lose your files and that server crashes or something like that you, all your stuff's gone with git it, it takes snapshots of certain content uh, and saves that the change just the change content and you can access pretty much any you can access the state of your files at any point um, before you you pushed it to the server um, or after it just it tracks everything um, I would definitely suggest l reading more about git because um, it's it's very it's really handy and it's something that once you start using um, you'll always use it so uh, and git was created for speed and efficiency um, like I said everything's local which makes it much faster than a standard VCS Okay, and uh, Git comes with the Rails installer, which is what we already installed um, a couple sections ago. So you already have it on your machine if you've been following along. So the benefits of Git, uh, at, in addition to what I just said, um, speed. Like I said, it's it's all locally, so there's no network latency or overhead. There's no uploading, downloading, except when you push and pull, which is just done in a single command. So it's very fast. And another benefit of Git is that it's distributed, uh, which means that unlike uh, standard VCS, it doesn't do a checkout of the source code from the server. Like it, it, can, it clones the entire project, the entire repository, onto anyone's system who, who is connected with the project. Um, so even if you're using centralized workflow, every developer has a backup of the entire server on their local machine. So it's virtually impossible to to have have it all be destroyed like it could when just having a local and a, and a remote version of the same files. And data assurance. Data assurance is another um, really big benefit of using Git. Uh, Git uses a data model that will ensure integrity of your data. Uh, every file has its own checksum for data retrieval, so um, this makes this makes it so what you upload is exactly what you get back. So there's no corruption of data. It's it's almost impossible. Staging staging is another big thing. It, most VCS most version control systems they'll have a local version and a version on the server, and that's it. You know, like I said before, uh, you save the local and then the remote gets saved. Uh, that that's very simple uh, version control. Git, however, has a staging area, which is a third area in between the local and the remote. All right, so you can change something and then send it to the staging area without actually committing it to the server. So once you know you're done, you can then choose to commit 
once you know that you're done editing your files so it's not actually being uploaded at the same exact time um, and and the staging feature is actually completely optional you don't need to use it if you don't want all you need to do is add an a uh, um, hyphen a on the git command so you don't have to use it but it's a really good thing to have and the next benefit of git is collaborating with other developers uh, it's extremely useful to use git if you're having more than one developer on a project like i said earlier each each developer will have their own version on their system so you can there's something called branches in git um, you'd have the the master branch which is the master uh, and then you could create these separate branches off of the master and name those and then you could just hand that branch to another developer so they can work on it independent of of the master files so they can do what they want it they need to do maybe they have a couple tasks um, and then they'll upload it or push rather um, to to that particular branch and then the the leader of the project or whoever it is um, can can check it out and then if it looks good they can merge the branch into the master so it's, it's very useful for um, projects that have multiple developers so here's a graphic from uh, austeel.com that really depicts the flow uh, the workflow and the data flow of, of using git um, you'll see we have our workspace where, which is our local machine and then we have the remote repository which is Heroku or whatever you, you're going to use whatever service github uh, is another huge name in, in git um, and then we have the index this is the staging area between the workspace and the local repository so uh, I'm going to show you the git syntax in a few in a few more slides but uh, you do for instance you do git add okay you do an add to add it to the the staging or the index or whatever you want to call this okay and then and you just keep doing the ads for each everything that you update all the files you that you're working on and then when you get that all set you can then do the commit command which will send it to the the local repository which is on your local machine uh, and once you commit everything you can then push it to the server or the remote repository okay and then you can get it back you can fetch or pull it from from the server or a new user it might be a new developer uh, new developers workspace and you give them the all the con control version information for the app and they can just pull it right from the repository and then they can work on it or they could check out another branch which this doesn't display branches but they could have their own branch which would do the same thing they could add commit and push uh, to a certain branch on the remote repository and then you have commands like uh, diff which shows the difference between the remote and the local versions um, and I mean there's a lot of commands I'm not gonna go over I'm not gonna get too uh, in depth with git um, because it's, it's really I'm finding it really hard to explain um, so I, I mean I hope you guys are getting you know getting at least the the basic structure of it or the basic idea of what git is and version control in general um, so I mean that's a really good graphic to, to show us visually how it works now I probably went over most of this um, it's different from other version control systems um, in that it's local and branches are easy and fast which makes it awesome for collaboration um, it lets you add content not files so it, it lets you add it takes snapshots of changed content as opposed to just uploading files um, so it's much more intelligent than a regular or any any other kind of version control software um, and you never try to integrate remote changes into another state so everything stays in its place um, so and, and again data assurance uh, that they have strict sets of checksums that that they use to retrieve data so it's virtually impossible to to have any kind of bad data corruption 
So next I want to go over the git syntax. Um, I'm not going to go in depth with uh, crazy commands, but there are a few basic ones that we need to, to actually deploy our app to Heroku, which we're going to be doing next. Um, and the git syntax is global. Um, no matter what services you're using, if you're using Heroku or GitHub or something else, the, the syntax of git is its own. So. Um, git clone is something you would do if you are either coming in a new developer to a to an existing app maybe um, and you would use the git clone the git clone to actually grab the entire repository uh, and put that on your local system okay now git init is the initialize command um, if you have a, f a local folder where you want to make a repository with the files in it um, you would use this command to initialize and then next you would do git add now git add like I showed you here puts us puts everything into the staging area git add and you could do git add and then put a file name but if you use the, the dot the period um, this will add the entire directory all your files and folders in the directory uh, as opposed to having to <laughs> write every file that you want Okay, so once you add that to the staging area and you finish doing whatever you're doing, you can then commit it. You can commit to the, the front of our local repository, which would be here. This is where the commit would bring us. Okay, so there's basically four areas. So the commit would bring us to the head, the front of our local area, our local repository. And with every commit, uh, I suggest using the A and the M option. Um, the M, because if you don't use this, if you just do git commit, it'll then take you to another screen where they want you to, they ask you to enter like comments and information about the commit. But you can f just simply add it here. Because um, you shouldn't have to ha have like paragraphs of information. You just want a, a comment to just let you know what the what the commit was about or what you changed. So that's what the M does. It, stops that screen excuse me <coughs> now the a makes it so that it, if you delete a file that that syncs up and that it deletes on the remote server okay because if you don't have that in there it's not going to do that it's just it's not going to delete a file on the server if you delete it on your local machine unless you have that and then finally after you commit everything that you've changed and you're ready to to bring it to the server you'll use git push and then master is just the branch you could push to a, a different branch if you wanted as well so if we go back here you see from here to here from three to four is the push okay so it's add commit and push and then you can pull to get it from the re repository and when we use Heroku uh, when we're ready to push you, it's just a tiny change you just gotta have the Heroku so that's the syntax if when we use Heroku and git checkout just means that you want to uh, switch to a new branch okay so if like if you have a repository for an app for 1.0 and you want to start building 1.1 or whatever 1.01 then you could check out and you could go into another branch called whatever the version is um, and once you're done with that you could then merge the branch into the master so I mean it's a really really good it's really efficient system for version control so Heroku um, it, Heroku is pretty difficult to explain uh, it's because it's one of the first of its kind uh, Heroku is a cloud platform as a service which is abbreviated PAAS and it just it's a service they sell it's kind of like web hosting but it it allows you to focus on your, your apps and not the server because um, they do all that and there it can get very very expensive if you were building a huge app like say Twitter or, or Facebook or sites like that um, it can get into the, uh, the thousands per month but they do offer an awesome free account um, for, for development and testing and they also give you a, a 5 megabyte Postgres database um, so it's really good to f for testing and development 
Um, you could you could even leave your app there and just use it as a hosting service as well. Um, but if I mean if you're gonna plan on getting a lot of traffic or using a lot of resources, uh, it's definitely gonna get expensive. Um, <clears throat> but it's a new way of it's a it is it's a new way of building apps. Um, and like I said, it developer it allows developers to focus on code and not servers and deployment, etc. Um, and Heroku can be scary at first. If you go to the website, um, it, it just uh, it looks it looks really hard to understand. But the the gist of it, the basics, aren't, they're not that. It's not that hard, and you'll see that as we go. Now, to implement Heroku, first thing you need to do is sign up for a free account. Um, and in order for us to use Heroku with Windows. Um, we want to download this. It's called the Tool Belt, and it's just a. It's, it has Git um, with it. It has uh, it has some other tools too. I forget exactly what they are. What they are, but that's what we'll use with our Windows and Rails installer program. Um, and we're going to set up a database. Um, we're going to use a Postgres database. Uh, as opposed to the the default SQL Lite, which comes with with Rails, because um, Heroku doesn't support that. It does support MySQL as well, which is what I thought we would use, but it's not. It's a little more difficult. So we're going to use the Postgres database. So you need to. We're going to download that um, in the next video, and then you want to create a repository, um, and then you would we're going to push and deploy the app that's the last thing we're going to do is actually deploy the app and we'll actually have a, a, a Heroku URL for, for us to view our app live on the web so that's it uh, that was kind of hard to explain I hope you guys um, kinda understood what I was talking about uh, but I think it'll be a lot easier once we actually do this it's a little harder to, to explain than to do so um, let's move on to the programming part of this section.